Hey there. Thanks for taking the time to check out the version 1.11.18 version of Project FastPass or GitLab Access Manager. Let's have a look and see what we got today. So in this iteration, we're looking at the front end UI. This is where kind of the seeing is believing starts to take place. And so you can actually see how we're going to see it from a user perspective, have an admin perspective, uh, how we're bringing in the CSS and the JavaScript, and really making it so that you can actually see what all the back end work is doing. How do we present it to the user on the front end? Now, with that, today's demo is very much on the initial scaffolding. We're just getting the navigation going, getting some colors, layouts. It's not going to be as rich as you might think a UI should be yet. We're getting there, right? So this is just the kind of the work in progress as we're going. So we're very early on. Um, but as far as these demo go, we're showing you all the stuff behind the hood. And I also want to take a few minutes to teach you about how model view controller applications work if you haven't seen it before. Um, just to kind of get everyone on the same page of what goes into building this uh, and how we can extend it later when the time comes. And so we'll look a little bit at the controller, scaffolding, and routes, uh, and then show some of the preliminary dashboard uh, navigation. Uh, we don't have much data populating yet, but you'll see a little bit of how that sets up and how we navigate around. So before we get into that, one of the questions that we always get asked uh, as engineers, as programmers, is just build me an app. You know, give me a front end, let me click around. And there's a lot of power under the hood that has to be built first. And that's where the difference between back end and front end engineering come in and a hybrid that we call full stack engineering. And so GitLab Access Manager is a full stack application. It does both the back end and the front end components. And if we don't have those back end pieces in, we end up building for a lot of uh, workflows up front that are very Frankenstein in the back. And so we want to make sure that we build a solid foundation for our data schema, for the way that we're tracking a lot of the pieces. And so as we extend, we have a, a, a common framework, a structure to work off of, right? The other piece of it as well is the application that we're building for Glam is very much a security, least privileged design model. And users should only have access to certain pieces, they shouldn't be able to see it all. And so we really have to think about what can a user access what's audited, what's approved, and we really have to give that a little extra thought, especially with the, the nature of this application. So in the last couple demos, you've seen how we're building our integration with our APIs, our database schema, our backend, what we call things. This is gonna bring that forward and show it what it looks like in the user interface. So that's what we're looking at. So the front end UI is a piece of it that's building walk on top of the back end, right? So if you've never seen how some of these programs get put together before, Here's a little bit of a concept overview. So as a user, you're starting up here where the number one is in the client browser. And what you're doing is you're hitting a URL, right? You're hitting a website. That might be a front end application that has a login screen. It might be a consumer application where you're going on and you're buying event tickets, for example. Or it could be a back end business application. It doesn't really matter what the application is. The fundamentals of how requests are processed work generally the same uh, with a sm few variations between languages, frameworks, and, and some tech stacks. Uh, but generally speaking, this is the concept of how these things generally work through. Uh, we're not going to mine some of the new JavaScript frameworks that do more of the um, single page applications. We're not going to get into the spa world. Um, this is focused on more of the traditional MVC. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to come into a route. And a route is kind of like a traffic cop or maybe a, a possibly a, a map application that says, you've showed up in our city, where is it you want to go? And it'll have a list of all the addresses that it can get to, right? Those are called routes. And what the routes are behind the scenes is they specify which uh, class or which controller, if you will, are you going to go talk to and which method in that controller are you going for? And so it ties together the slash event slash tickets to the event ticket controller and the index method, which shows a list of all the tickets, right? Once it knows where you're going and it validates that you're a valid request, it's also going to apply some middleware. And so if you're not signed in, it'll redirect you to the sign-in page. It handles a lot of that request processing. So in a, in a way, you could think of routes as the application version of how your web server would be like Nginx and like handling a virtual host. It's a similar kind of concept. It's not quite direct, but if you've never heard of it before, it's kind of what it is, uh, where it basically says, where am I going to take you and are you allowed to get there? Once that's been handled, it's going to go into a controller. And a controller is basically navigating what data are you trying to access, what are you trying to do with that data, and am I returning that data to you in some shape or form, for example, in an HTML page, 
or am I doing some action on your behalf to save that data somewhere, to make an API call, to run a workflow? And the controller's doing all the busy work of connecting the dots of who do I gotta talk to, what do I gotta do? Now, when you're inside the controller, there's a couple steps that happen that you as a user never see. Only the engineers ever see this on the back and when we're building it, and that is, generally speaking, you're hitting a controller to get data, right? It'll be presented in a nice, pretty view, which we'll get to in a few minutes, but that's basically going over to our object relationship mapping system. And if you've seen an active record, if you're familiar with Eloquent, it doesn't matter what the system is, it basically connects the model to the database. And so if you have a SQL database table and you have models and define all the relationships and what fields you have, it's doing all the busy work and the, ma the black magic, if you will, to connect and says, I want to get a list of event tickets. I know it's in the event tickets database table. What do I need to do to get that? You go talk to the model. The model tells you what you can or can't get, defines all those pieces. The model will then talk to the database table, grab the data that you're requesting, bring it back to you, and then bring it back all the way to the controller. Now the controller is going to get an object or an array of that data. Think of this if you've ever seen a YAML or JSON come back and it's got a couple key value pairs, it's got a list of items. That happened through the ORM. It went into the database and brought that data back. Whether you do this in a front-end application like we're doing today, whether you do this with an API that returns a REST endpoint with JSON data, it's all fundamentally the same. The presentation layer is going to vary, but the back-end fundamentals are the same. Now, once it has, the controller has that data, it needs to figure out what am I gonna do with this data and pass it back to you. So it then will go and say, what view are you trying to do? Am I returning this to JSON, which is really simple? Or am I gonna put this into a template file and that it has variable placeholders of where I'm gonna drop these values into? And we're gonna look at the details of that in a minute. Once it says, this is the template I wanna use, it's then gonna plug all those variables in from our data source into that template and then render it together, combine it together into what's called the rendered view. That may be cached, that may not be, depending on the application. And then that effectively is the HTML that you then see that renders out in your browser. So it'll return it all the way back through your web server, back into your browser. And so you'll then see, here's the, the template, here's the view, here's the HTML template that we had, here's the data we got from the database, we put all the variable placeholders where they need to be, and now you get a populated table. There's more JavaScript magic that happens with additional things that go on there. It's out of scope for today's conversation, but it kind of gives you a flow as you work through how does a full stack application get data, process data, et cetera. So understanding some of these components with controllers, routes, and views is really helpful in understanding what we're working on, what we're, we're talking about today, right? I don't want to spend a lot of time. I'm going to pause here for a minute, so if you'd like to stop the video and kind of read through some of the details, this is just drilling down and double clicking on that summary workflow we saw a moment ago, where the web server receives the request, it goes into the route, we define what the route is, what controller it's going to use, what method it's going to handle it, look inside of that controller, this is how we get that data, and here's what we're going to return once we have that data as an array, right? That's what we're going to end up working with today. As we pass it over, we're going to do that event tickets. It's going to go over to the model. It knows which database table to go look in. It's going to run our SQL queries for us so we don't have to do any of that complexity in the dotted line box. Grab that data, bring it back, pass it in, and back to the controller we go. The views are where we're going to spend a little more time on today. Because at the end of the day, remember that front end user experience? We're always going to be iterating upon this. We're always going to be making it better, improving it, adding more functionality. But the back end fundamentally doesn't change. We just change the way that we present the data to make it more user friendly, right? That's what front end develop is focused on doing, design, development, user experience. All those pieces are combined together to make it easy for the user to do their job. So where we're going to care about is in the view file itself, we need to work through and look at some of that. So once the controller has the uh, template that it needs, it's, you see, you recognize the HTML here. We have a very simple table. If you've ever seen a table or a TR or a TD tag, it's all this is. And we're simply looping through that array of tickets that we have. And it's gonna go down and say, okay, that database table gave me back the ID, the ticket holder name, the price of the ticket. Did they attend, did they not attend, right? And then simply loop that into the table. The controller will then process that data, combine it together to spit back the exact you know, rendered cache view that you'll see in your browser. Right? We can change this. Maybe this table is more interactive. 
Maybe I actually want to see a, a spinning wheel of, you know, is this ticket? Are they where are they at in the in the you know the theater or the event center right now? Right? There's different functionality we can add. We can add workflows. We can add different pieces with this data. So as you iterate through building an application over time, you're going to add more and more functionality. The data doesn't change. The way you render it does. So just keep that in mind. And you're going to see a lot of the base scaffolding today that's, it may not look very pretty. It may not look very functional yet. But we've got the data there behind the scenes. And that's what's going to matter as we build the rest of that functionality. Right? So we set that stage. And so that if, you're, if you don't really understand what this is, you've never seen this before, that's totally OK. It's not going to be overly important for this. But if you're wondering, hey, if I was to remember this in a nutshell, these are kind of the 13 steps to remembering it, right? Brings the request in, goes to the routes, to the controller, over to the model, get data from the database, bring it back to the controller, figure out what view we're going to, compile that all together with our template variables, then return it back through the web server. So that's what we're going to work with, right? OK, we've got all of that down. Now, what are we working with today that relates to this? So in previous demos, we talked about database migrations and those models. We created those earlier, right? Now we're looking at creating those controller routes and views. If you've ever heard of REST API resources, what those basically are is that it's a common nomenclature for index, get, create, store, edit, update, delete, and restore. It basically is a, every REST API generally follows these conventions, or should that says this is what we call it when we don't manipulate records. The index may also be called list. Get is to get a single record. Create is the view, the form view when you're creating something. Store actually does the database work of taking your form response or form request, putting it into the database and giving you back the ID and any information that it created. Edit is that web UI for editing the record. Update handles the form request in the database. Delete's obviously going to delete that record from the database. And some databases support what's called soft deleting, which basically marks it as a deleted record so it never shows up in the UI. But instead of having to do full database re backups and restores, uh, if you have data loss, you do soft delete and you could do a restore to simply toggle a flag and that data will come back. There are also destroy commands that are a permanent deletion. They're out of scope for the conversation today. But essentially, our controller, our route, and our view are going to match this nomenclature as we go through it. Today, you're going to see a lot of the show method. Show and get are the same thing. Uh, it just depends on which nomenclature we're using depending on the system that we're in, right? All right, we've got that down. We understand what MVC is. We understand how models work, views, controllers. Let's have a look at what this really is. So we're going to jump to the demo pretty quick today. And what I want to share with you is from the web UI perspective, we're going to sign with Okta. So we now have our Okta authentication working. We're going to view user profile data. So what do we get from Okta when we bring that data in? And then we're going to look at just kind of navigation. There's not a lot here yet from the UI. We've been putting all the pieces together. It's very early in this development. But kind of get a sense of, depending on the persona that you are, if you're a normal user, if you're an admin, we can look at it if you are you know if you manage a team, if you're a manager, if you are a VP and you have multiple teams underneath of you. Or if you're an audit, in an audit security compliance kind of role, you can see all the actions that take place, approvals, settings, all these other pieces that can happen. Once we've kind of glanced at how the UI looks, we're then going to apply some of the knowledge we looked at a few minutes ago into how the source code works. And this is explicitly going to look at the routes, the controllers, getting the data from the model, the views, and the permissions. This is going to go pretty quick. Feel free to pause at any point if you want to stop and study what you're seeing on the screen. Um, but I do want to make it, uh, you know, be in the interest of time, be able to not spend too much time uh, dwelling on it, right? Okay, so we've got that. We're happy there. So let's go ahead and we'll look at that web UI. So this is some of the source code behind the scenes. We're going to get to that in just a minute. We want to actually focus first on wherever that went. Lovely. We want this. Here we go. And that's how demos work when things aren't set up. So this is the Okta login screen, right, for GitLab Access Manager. We are running this in a local development environment. We've connected to our, our uh, Okta Sandbox instance. And I've already put my credentials in here to be able to sign in. So when I click on Sign In, it's going to take me to the GitLab Access Manager dashboard. And the reason it's throwing this is probably because I had this screen setting up here for too long. 
So I'm going to do, I'm just going to type in the URL again. This is the joy of live demos when you try to prepare things and you have authentication and security and CRSF requests. So it already did my authentication for me. It just had a bad token. I've refreshed. We're now back to a good state. So once you've signed in, remember this is early development, right? Once you've signed in, you're going to land up on the user section of it. This is where all of our team members are going to have access to. And we don't have anything in our dashboard yet. But if I go to the My Profile, I'll see one of the early, you know, early iterations or incarnations of what this data gives me. So this is kind of my Okta profile data. And so what Okta knows about me is all this raw data down below. And we share this more for the, um, you know, basically, if you if you see something that's a problem, why does it show in the UI? Here's what Okta knows about us. It may be coming up from the HRS behind the scenes. It allows us to troubleshoot faster if you can see the raw data, right? Over on the right, it knew that my manager is Peter. It then worked its way up through the Okta database, figuring out that Peter's manager is Rob, then Brian, then Brian, and then Sid. And so what that the reason that we share that information in here is depending on the approval that you need to access something, it may require a certain level of approval. Sometimes it's your manager, sometimes it's higher than your manager, but we needed a systematic way to know that it needs a VP approval, for example, or it needs a senior director approval. Depending on the level of the job title, we simply gave it an integer from one through 10. Each user is a one, their manager is a two, then it goes to senior manager, system owner, director, senior director, VP, working its way up through the e-group all the way to the CEO. We don't expect we're ever gonna have a lot of level 10 and level nine. However, we wanna put that in there from a security perspective in interest of our safe framework and some of the data that users may be able to get access to, depending on the sensitivity of it, if it's not part of the normal job role. So that's why it's, what it's there for. It also lets us go in and view the organization chart and work our way through that. So that's how the user profile works. There's other areas in here that we're not gonna spend any time in today, but it basically says, let me show me everything of how I'm connected, what applications I can see, look at my credentials for that application or a link to use SSO to sign in, any approvals I've done in the past, any active approvals will show up on the current dashboard, and then any audit logs, so you can see everything that GitLab Access Manager has done for you, right? There's other areas of here, we're not gonna spend much time looking at all of them, we're gonna look in admin real quick, just kind of get a glance, right? Um, and so if I'm in an admin view, obviously this will be restricted to just a few people, um, is I'll then be able to see all the different database records. And this is where that database modeling that we did before, this is where that dot connects. So we get a web UI to see it. And so if I went onto the auth dashboard, I've done a very simple render, and I'm gonna show you that in the source code in just a minute to kind of see what that means and why. Um, so let's just work our way down through here and see all the different elements. And this navigation menu will get much bigger as we iterate and start building some of the functionality in. But that's the scaffolding we were working on this week, is can we get it so that we can navigate around? And then depending on the links that we have here, right now my user is an admin. As I remove different features and functionality, that navigation menu is going to change. It's going to reduce and restrict what I can access. And so if I go into the database, I'm gonna do this off screen for just a second, and I go into the auth group, or the, I should, correction, the auth role for what I'm looking at here, I'm gonna edit the permissions table. And what I'm gonna specifically do is I'm gonna remove the audit and the my team from this. So if I remove, I'm gonna remove team and I remove audit permissions. And so as a user, I can no longer access that. And when I refresh this page, you notice those icons on the left are no longer there. Every user when they come in is gonna start with my profile, they'll get elevated privileges depending on the role they're in, if they have a team, depending on what you need to access, right? And everyone will obviously be able to do docs and support. So that's kind of the functionality of the UI. Now, if I just remove, get, get out of here for a second, and let's have a look at that code. And so if I bring that back up, is we've got a couple of files in here. So we know that from a route perspective, we came in through a couple different paths. One that we were just looking at is admin slash dashboard. And what that was focusing on is what am I seeing as an admin when I first land? That's the URL I'm expecting. Where is it going? It's gonna to go to the dashboard controller and then go to show. And then the name here is simply an internal name we use in our system so we can gener generate dynamic links for all the HREF links throughout the application to get to that page. 
without dealing with some of the dynamicness of dropping in variables or IDs or anything of that nature, right? Now, we were just on the auth admin dashboard. What I want to share with you is this route and following this on our way through. So if I go to the dashboard controller, so it says go to the dashboard controller and look at the show method. If I go to that dashboard controller, here's that show method. It's where we saw the this is the auth dashboard and it showed the one row, one table row. It wasn't formatted, but it showed the auth user. What this is doing is going into our database table. This is where that model comes in. The model is going to do all the heavy lifting for us to get over grab that information and then render this view. This is a template view. I'll show you it in a second and then pass in an array with the auth users. And so if I go to that show page, what does it think is going on? This is what we call view partials. And if you ever use Jinja templates, they're very much the same thing where you can basically break up your HTML into different sections for don't repeat yourself kind of mentality. And so we have all of our HTML here. It drops all the navigation, all the different pieces in and then down toward the bottom, we have yield content. What yield content is doing is says go to this page, look for the section called content. It'll then do that and we're extending that template, right? Here's that table, here's that for each loop. It loops through the users and simply adds them in. That's how easy it is for us to get data into our system. How we format it, how we present it, what CSS and JavaScript we throw on it, totally up to our imaginations, right? So that's the pieces that uh, go into this. This is very basic from an uh, introductory you know, demo perspective, but we've just got all that scaffolding and to be able to navigate around, handle the permissions, start working on the navigation, start building on our dashboard pages, and it's very early in our journey, right? But this just kind of shows you a, a taste of where we're at. So with that, that's what we want to share today. Um, if you have any questions or you want to know more, feel free to check out some of the reference links. Uh, we have a lot of different pieces in here. We're starting to touch the front end. A lot of it's open to our imagination, right? So our functionality that we're working on right now is this core scaffolding. We're going to get better over time. We're going to do a lot more over time. Uh, but it kind of gives you a preview of where we're going. So with that, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. And feel free to rate, let us know if you have any questions. Have a great day.